Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview as well as some quick benchmarks on this verbatim 256 gigabyte SSD. This is a standard 2.5 inch SSD and again 256 gigabytes it uh, will operate on the SATA Revision 2 bus and that is 3 gigabits per second uh, maximum transfer speed. Uh, so actually you can plug this into say a SATA Rev 1 or a SATA Rev 3 port. Uh, I would not re recommend a SATA Rev 1 port because that will uh, limit the drive's performance, but you can plug it into a SATA Rev 3 port and uh, you'll still have uh, all the bandwidth of SATA Rev 2 plus some additional overhead. Uh, also, you get some of the sort of general benefits of SSDs, of course, high speed data transfer. They run silently, they're shock resistant, they have low power consumption. Uh, in the box, you get the SSD drive, you also get the NTI Echo cloning software. So, if you're um, migrating from an old system, you can use that in tandem with the HDD enclosure. It's a USB 2.0 enclosure that comes inside the box as well as you get a mounting bracket and Molex power cables. Now, uh, Verbatim has some interesting nomenclature that they're using. Uh, by the way, here's sort of all the detailed specs. Um, but Verbatim for their actual products use uh, SKU numbers. So if you want to know what specific SSD you're looking at here, it is 47372. Inside the box, we have a drive upgrade kit quick installation guide. So uh, if you've never installed a 2.5 inch drive, that will take you through the general procedures. It is also in multiple languages, so if English isn't your first language, it's got a nice collection of different languages there in the guide. Of course, you get the SSD itself, and uh, this is actually sort of uh, pre-installed in the little uh, drive enclosure here. We will come back to that in just a moment. Uh, here, I can tell that there's more stuff because it's heavy. At the bottom, we have a Molex to SATA adapter, the other part of that drive installation kit. Uh, we also have a 2.5 inch to 3.5 inch converter. So uh, if you have, for instance, an older computer case, which only has 3.5 inch drive cages, you can mount the SSD to this, and then you can mount that in a 3.5 inch drive ca cage. Also comes with, of course, the mounting screws for that. Uh, again, also if you're using maybe an older power supply or you don't have a handy serial ATA power connector, you can use that and that's just Molex to serial ATA power. Uh, also, you get the other piece, which is the top piece of this uh, 2.5 inch uh, drive enclosure here, USB, so you can plug that in uh, with your existing system up and running and uh, work on the drive migration. And then of course, to make sure you can plug that in properly, you get a USB cable, there it is, uh, A to B USB cable, so small end goes in the drive enclosure and big end goes into your existing computer. That is just about it for accessories. Here's a quick look at the 2.5 inch drive enclosure. I've popped the top on there just to give you guys a better look. It's got a couple rubber strips on there for some impact protection, although that is one of the uh, hallmarks of SSDs in general is their resistance to that. It's got a verbatim logo at the top as well as a little LED right here that'll light up when it's plugged in and then there is your USB 2.0 slot on the side. So now I've removed the drive's external enclosure, at least most of it. The last remaining piece is just this little serial ATA to USB adapter right there, so kind of cool how tiny those are becoming. Uh, here is the drive itself, so as you can see you've got your verbatim logo on the front, 256 gig drive. Uh, these are the screws you can remove if you want to actually disassemble the drive, although that may void your warranty, so bear that in mind. Uh, it has a bit of a textured finish, so as you can see uh, here on the back, um, it's got sort of a nice feel to it. It stays a, a matte black color, so it should match um, with most uh, components that you might have in your computer case. And of course, you get standard 2.5 inch drive mounting points, so two, uh, four here on the bottom, or if you're mounting it from the side, uh, there's two on either side. Here at the back, you can see your serial ATA ports, so you got a data uh, connector and a power connector. Again, serial ATA revision to 3 gigabit per second compatible. Uh, and that being said, let's see what sort of speeds we can get out of this drive. So here's a quick look at the first page of our ben benchmarks. There's a lot of information here because I also have all the system info up on this one. Uh, so you might notice, for instance, that the formatted capacity of the drive is 238 gigabytes. Um, so that is the usable space after the drive's actually been formatted. Also, the controller that we're using on this drive is the Fison PS3108. Uh, so this is our crystal disk mark bench benchmark. Uh, and this is running in the standard mode. I'm doing a thousand megabyte test, or one gigabyte test, uh, doing the average of five runs here. So on the left side, we can see the detailed uh, results. So that has input output operations per second, uh, peaked out at 12,000 here with this test. Bear in mind, this is a random data test. 
so essentially it is incompressible data that's being um, written and read off of the drive. So over here on the right, we can see our sort of larger numbers. So sequential reads and writes, uh, we got 260 megabytes per second and 245 megabytes per second. On the 512K test, uh, we were right around 160, 155 to 160 megabytes per second. The 4K test here, which I always point out as uh, a very key test, if we're, especially for typical day-to-day -day computer use, you don't see big numbers there, uh, but we did get just shy of 10 megabytes per second for read and 35.57 uh, for writes. Moving on to our next page here, uh, we can see I'm now running this with compressible data. So the uh, difference here is between compressible and incompressible data is that on the fly, the drive controller can actually compress that data and uh, basically do faster reads and writes performance. So here we hit 20,000 input-output operations per second on our QDepth32 test. And then over here on the right, we can see uh, particularly the 512K test as well as our writes, uh, the uh, performance jumped up quite a bit. So 264, 235 there for reads and writes. Uh, uh, respectively, also 41.56 for the 4K test and 31.09 for the right 4K test. Next up, we have AS SSD, and uh, bear in mind here that I'm using the drive in its uh, the formatted state that it came directly from the manufacturer, uh, which still performed just fine. So. Um, uh, that that being said, here's our uh, AS SSD test. This shows similar results to the uh, Crystal Disk Mark incompressible test. So we can see 247.66 on the reads, 237.17 on the writes, uh, 9 and 36 respectively on the 4K test. Uh, this is the same test here, but on the left side here, it's displaying input output operations per second. Uh, so here we hit about uh, 13,000 max on the reads and about 11,000 max on the writes. Next up, we have Atto, and uh, this is a very popular benchmark, especially for actual drive manufacturers to show sort of the maximum performance of their drive. Uh, it does a bunch of different transfer sizes sort of down the line, so starting with smaller here and moving on to the bigger ones. Of course, with the bigger tests, you get better performance. And here we can see uh, the right column and the read column. Uh, with the right column, the max we hit was uh, just shy of 235 megabytes per second, and for the reads, we hit just shy of 280 megabytes per second. This is running at Q-depth 4. If you want to really see the max performance of the drive, uh, you can try Q-depth 10, which is uh, sort of the standard a lot of uh, uh, SSD manufacturers use. Again, here very similar results, but just a little bit more. So 246 megabytes per second on the right, and uh, again, about 280 on the read. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the verbatim 256 gigabyte SSD model 47372 and it operates on the SATA Revision 2 3 gigabits per second interface. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.